<laughs> that really does feel so good, man. Hey, everybody. Lewis here. Rope It Dope. We're at the Rope It Dope store in East Philadelphia, Haddon Heights, New Jersey, to be exact. Uh, my name is Lewis Marks. I am... Uh, the CEO <laughs> of rope dope uh, which means basically I get to do a lot of work. <laughs> uh, I have a, uh, you know, we've got a great staff of people that are helping us out and keeping rope dope rolling. If you're not familiar with the label, um, you know, jump online and, and look it up if you can. Uh, 16, 17 years now putting out uh, a lot of interesting jazz and other genres, uh, records from some really wonderful people who deserve uh, everything they've got and plenty more. So, you know, if you're, if you're liking music, please support. Uh, what we're doing here, I'm sorry, Fabian Brown. Fabian Brown. Please, <laughs> tell the people. Uh, tell the people, uh, well, 20 years in the music industry, helping uh, Rope It Up out with some sync and licensing. Uh, and holding it down here at the storefront in East Philadelphia. East Philadelphia. It's going to be, you'll, you'll remember East Philadelphia. People will know. They will. So what we're doing here, this is episode one of, I think, what we're going to call Rope It Up TV. Uh, grew out of an interest to try to make the uh, announcements and talk about the records that, we're, that we have coming out a little bit more interactive and a little bit more personal. Uh, so we're going to record this thing every week. Uh, live, um, meaning that we are not going to edit. We are simply going to uh, sit down and, and talk about the records, uh, keep it as uh, direct and real as we possibly can. I like that. And uh, that means you're going to see some mistakes, and so we apologize in advance for all of those. And uh, mostly, uh, you know, just my, I'll issue my disclaimer. Uh, I've never done this before. You know, we're, we're going to see what happens. Good news is there are going to be a lot of great musicians rolling through. We're going to have some interviews here and there. Uh, we're going to do those live as well and try to have this uh, uh, be as direct as we can. Uh, so, who, who is this? Yeah, who is this? Exactly. We're going to start in. This is a, a track that came out last week from the great uh, trumpeter Nick Payton, Ooh. Nicholas Payton, who has just joined the Rope Oak family with his imprint, Payton Records. Payton Records. Yeah. Uh, he's got a record coming out in the spring, and he wanted to drop this track really quickly right around Indigenous People's Day. Uh, it speaks to his perspective. Wait, what day was that? Indigenous People's Day. I love the way you said that. Um, I it used to be called something else. I don't I don't remember, really. Uh, it's like ancient history or doesn't, something. Doesn't yeah. matter what we used yeah. to be called. Um, so... Uh, that's a 15 minute track, so what we're going to do here is kind of jump ahead into our next track, and we're going to bring on the, uh, the random shuffle and see what track comes up next, and we'll talk a little bit about it. I got to ask you, so, so this track right here, is it, is it coming out before the rest of the album? It, it's out. It's out. It's out. Yeah. And uh, you can find it on iTunes, Spotify, everywhere. Bandcamp? Uh, right now, Bandcamp as well. Okay. Yep. Um, Nick's back catalog is there on Bandcamp too. The five records that he's previously released on Paytone. Okay. So now you can buy those directly from the artist. That's uh, great. Through the label. Yeah. Um, all right, let's push the button. We need one of those <laughs> random <laughs> buttons. I like it. All right, let's see what happens. What do we got? Oh yes. from Mr. Michael Blake. Michael Blake! Michael Blake. The record is called Red Hook Soul. 
Uh, this track is the title track, and uh, the whole album is a tribute to uh, the Red Hook neighborhood of Brooklyn. Okay. Mike Blake feels very strongly about it. Uh, part of that, if you read his bio, it's pretty interesting. Uh, Michael got his start with John Laurie and the Lounge Lizards, and he's played with the best uh, for good reason. And, but he's also played a lot of dive bars. Okay. And so he's balancing his pedigree and that of the band, which I'll mention to you, uh, some incredible cats on this record, uh, with his, his memories and love of uh, salt of the earth, gritty, you know, local bar. Um, and I think this thing grew out of some sessions they did at a Red Hook bar. Okay. And the owner of the bar, forgive me, uh, said, let's go in the studio and record that. Yeah. So that's how it came about. Let's take a look real quick. Uh, I feel like we need to bring the volume down just a little bit so that people can hear or that I can hear myself. Um, Michael's got a bunch of albums out. If you, if you don't know about him, uh, you know, check, check into the history. It's really good. So I, I was introduced to this record. We're going to talk a little bit in each, as often as we can, about... Uh, you know, how the record ended up with us, how the person ended up with Rope It Open. This one comes from Tony Cher. <laughs> you remember Tony Cher? I do. Family Dinner Volume 1, incredible guitarist, unbelievable human being. I was in New York uh, at Winter Jazz Fest and had coffee with Tony. And he said, hey, well, you know, we did this. <laughs> it was very, he's like, you know, we did this record. And uh, if you want to talk to the guy, you know, we, we, we did might be interested in putting it out on Rope It Up. I said, I absolutely want to talk to you about That's a referral that you'll take all day. Yeah. A lot of it happens that way. Um, but here, so, um, two, two uh, uh, tracks written by Michael Blake on here and five covers from Gladys Knight, Otis Redding, Rasan Roland Kirk, Ray Charles, and Lana Del Rey. Wow. Yes, it is that song. Uh, and well done, too. So you have to check that out. Here's the personnel. Uh, on bass, Tim Lunsell. On drums, Tony Mason. Keyboards, Eric Deutsch. Guitar, Avi Bortnick. Percussion, Moses Petru. And of course, Tony Cher on guitar. And, you know, this is a fun record. And it, it was intended to be a fun record. It's, it's, it, it's, there's some really good vibe in here. One of my faves on this record is uh, the song King Curtis. You know, it's funny, King Curtis is one of those folks that I listened to when I was younger because that, that was a buzz because of the Allman Brothers. Okay. So the Allman Brothers quickly reference in the Live at Fillmore East record. Do you all know about King Curtis? If you don't know about King Curtis, you should look him up. That was right? it. So when I, when I was nine years old, I'm like, <laughs> you know, it wasn't this, right? No, like it was them. And it's like, go to the store, find King Curtis, you know? So uh, that caught my eye and ear right away. <laughs> it wasn't this. No, I'm, I'm like, look him up. I'm doing the thing for look him up. Look him up. That's, 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 that's the that's system. What did you do? Go to the library? <laughs> what was the old universal hand gesture for uh, Yellow look pages? him up? Uh, it was go to the record store or get a magazine. Wow. Right? Uh, I don't know, hardly even remember it. Do you remember what you did when you were driving around, uh, you know, before cell phones, and you needed to find directions? Do you rem do you remember one time where you stopped somewhere and got on a payphone and called somebody? And, I do. Uh, yeah, I don't. So before Map, of course, I don't remember yesterday. Before GPS, MapQuest, before MapQuest, Map. Right, I remember the maps for sure. Yeah, I just don't really remember the communication part of that, like how we. I mean, yeah, so you looked it up on the map. I guess you planned it out before you left. That's it. You had to prepare. All right. <laughs> anyway. All right, so let's, let's, uh, let's see how we do our time here. I love the soprano sax, Michael. So one of the things we're going to do uh, in this, I think we agreed to it before, is for at least one of the songs that we play during this show, we're just going to turn it up and let it play. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, uh, and let people hear it without, you know, us talking over it. So since we're on shuffle and we're doing this randomly, I know which one I want to play through. When it comes up, I'm just going to be like, that's the that's one. That's it. That's the one. Okay. Well, it wasn't.
wasn't that one. <laughs> there we go. All right, so now we bounce to uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And we're coming in here. Just give it yes. a little time. guys, uh, name of the band is Four Corners. Um, they're from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, a couple of brothers, I believe, in here. Uh, James Thompson, Isaac Thompson, bass and guitar, with Clarence Hill on keys and Jared Sullivan on drums. Um, It's interesting. These are this is one of those bands where we have to we have to you know write more about them. Um, but they've been around Atlanta for a while, and I think what's up with them, from my experience, and I'll explain, is they're kind of like that 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 inner secret kind of band. Like the people who know know, right? And everybody else is like, huh? And then so and here's here's why I think that. Uh, I met with these guys on Skype, as I often do, right? Okay. Um, we talked about what rope a does, how we're a little bit different than other record labels, and what to expect. Um, the whole band jumped on Skype. On Skype. It was cool. And every time. It's not, it's not often that that happens, actually. Usually there's one person or two people talking to me. Um, and just great guys. Um... Uh, they all look like they just came from the gym. <laughs> like, ser- like seriously, um, healthy, powerful, like dedicated me. people. No. Just a little bit. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess a little bit. Yeah, only more so. <laughs> right. Got it. Got right. it. Um, and we talked about it, and I listened to the music, and it's an interesting little filter I have on. And I, I don't. I haven't really. Maybe I haven't talked to you about this, but. You know, we did four uh, Snarky Puppy records here at Ropeno, and after Snarky Puppy started to get uh, much more well-known, the demos started to come in from bands who sounded a little bit like Snarky Puppy, and my rule of thumb was, no, no, I don't want, I don't want to go there. Um, you know, let's look for something a little bit more interesting. And I think that somebody could say, what, what do you think when you hear this? Do you hear a little bit of Snarky Puppy, or do you hear something more? I hear something... Or fun, it, fundamentally, it's there, mm-hmm. but it's different. It's, okay. it's, it's different. Um, the pocket right here is a little bit different, you know? You know, no horns. You know, it's, 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 it's a different approach to it. Seems to flow through a lot more, too. It's more like that 70s fusion, isn't it, than than the Snarky Puppy, but with like some church in it. It kind of reminds me of a, church in it? a little fusion, like like Michael Brecker fusion. Okay. Yellow Jackets fusion. Anyway, so they they, they agreed. We, we we agreed to do the record and signed on. And I posted it on my Facebook page. You know, proud to welcome the Four Corners to the Rope It Up family, which I will often do. And the likes just started piling in, and everyone was like. All the, all the musicians, all the great musicians and the cats in the UK on the radio were like, nice one, Lewis, nice one. Yes. It's like validating. You know? So I knew, I was like, what? And I really didn't even, I, I had no idea that they were connected with those folks. Um, they do hear reference Chick Corea uh, electric band, specifically the Chick Corea electric band. Um, so, interesting. Anyway, that one's a good long song, so we're gonna hit shuffle again, and we're gonna go out with that at the end of the show, all right? Because I think we got about another seven or five minutes of that. Um, here we go. All right. Um, 
I love how you just met him on Skype and we're this one real quick. Gonna intro it. Um, this is uh, from Tommaso Capolato on Mark DeClavlo's Masha Beats label through Ropa Dope. Um, Tommaso, uh, Italian producer and musician, and we're just gonna let you just listen to this and see what you think. This label outside of outside, outside of Mark. Mark Mark released his own records on uh, Master Beats, and now he is branching out and signing new people. It's a great way to start. Uh, Tommaso is a beautiful start. Um, we're playing the lottery here on what comes up next, so let's uh, let's just pause. Let's just pause for a minute here and and, and chat. Um, so that record from Tommaso Capolato comes out on November 4th. Okay. Um, this will be the first place anybody has heard it outside of the artist and, uh, and producer. Uh, I got, and, a, I got, a, label guy. Yeah. I got a question for you. So there, it seems like a running theme where you're interacting with these artists, you know, uh, the, the stories behind you meeting with these artists prior, prior for the album coming out is just amazing to me. Um, out of the artists that we have here on the lineup, what's the what's the craziest story? What's the most uh, out of these particular? Oh, ones, out of these, because yeah, I know there's that, some crazy that's a ones. Tough one. You mentioned Michael Blake. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I mean, the Michael Blake. I, the, you know, 
I don't think the stories are that crazy. Okay. I mean, I, I, I think sometimes people have an impression of what it's like when you talk to a record label. And I think the reason people think that my stories are, are crazy is because it's not like that. <laughs> you know, it's just a pretty casual human connection thing. And, but you touch on something that's key, and you and I have talked about this. Uh, I kind of go by the people hmm. first. Um, I don't know how to play an instrument. I tried to play guitar. I'm horrible at it. Um, I enjoy it. <laughs> but I'm fairly certain that no one else will. Um, and I didn't pick up any instrument until later in life. So, you know, when you're a kid, you can try something and it, and it, and it seems hard, but it's not. You know, I mean, you had to learn how to crawl, you had to learn how to walk, and so you learned how to play guitar. Everything's like that. You get a little older, and you try things, and you realize this is this this is really difficult. It's gonna take and work. then you you know the thing that happened for me was you know an incredible appreciation for the people that do that know how to do, do this and the amount that they're putting into it. And it's so mystical. Like, you can't, say, you know, it's funny they used to have these things about, well, you know, who's Jimi Hendrix, the greatest guitarist in the world. And I'm like, how do they know? Like, you know, I mean, is it technical? Is it feel? Is it, it's, there are okay. so many variables in the process. Um, so, so that's why I go by people first. And that's why the, you know, the stories, I don't think they're really crazy stories. They're just, they're just interesting because I'm doing it differently. I'm just kind of following the people who know. And that's what these imprints are about as well. So, like, Mark DiClavolo knows music better than I or anybody that works at any record label ever, Would. ever will. Right. So why shouldn't he be in charge? And that, that's, that's, that's a great that's model. That's part of the, the, same, the same thing. Well, nice little... Don't let it rope it nice little, Thanks for bringing that out. I like that. Let's jump into the next one. Um, Who do you got coming? We go from well, we're doing the shuffle again, aren't we? Hopefully, yay! And it went to right where I wanted it to go. So. Oh my goodness! So this uh, again, you know, this is kind of the, the day of imprints here, right? We're international, so we jump over to uh, Paris. Uh, to uh, Yasmin Kid, uh, a French vocalist, performer. Um, she is uh, queued up for release tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, October 14th. Or, if this is delayed, sometime a week or so ago. Um, this is a, uh, a, another case, same case. Uh, Benjamin Rando okay. uh, is a French musician who lives in uh, Provence, uh, the south of France. Connected with us through Yassine Boularas from Ajoyo, who is Tunisian but grew up in Paris, but lives in New York now. We were introduced. He has a label uh, called Om Records. Uh, based in Provence, and he uh, signed Yasmin Kid, and um, this, uh, I said it'll come out tomorrow, um, this track is, that's what we need to do, uh, called Paris Jam 69, it's got that quintessential uh, Paris in the 60s feel to it, you know, the, with, the with one that says that you're not as cool as anything that's ever going to happen here. <laughs> You know, it's with, sexy. It's like with the really French sexy. spoken word underneath of it. Like, what's what is she saying? I want to know what she's saying. I, I don't know about you, but I, I listen to music in other languages and enjoy it more than English a lot of the time because I, I don't know what, know what they're saying. saying. So it's, it just sounds much more musical to me because I'm not my brain's not breaking down right the lyrics and and of course I I'm you know my background and basic interest is in. 
uh, you know, roots American blues and 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 uh, folk and, and rock and roll music and Bob Dylan, etc. So I'm I'm paying attention to lyrics, right? And I'm hypercritical about poorly written <laughs> lyrics. So this is, I mean, a good I, escape. I, to me, this is that was extremely well written. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter what because she's I saying. don't understand what she's saying. Uh, but I'll, I'm sure if someone broke it down for us, that's that's exactly where we would be. So a short one there, but I I, I recommend that people uh, just jump onto uh, Bandcamp, downloads.ropeadope.com. Jump over to you can see all the different labels at the top. You can jump over, stream this. It'll be out tomorrow, and. Uh, you know, send, sending them uh, on to music and, and Yasmin herself some support uh, is is always good to keep the music flowing. I love the vibe. We go to Dallas, Texas. Let me cue it up here. This is uh, this one's a bit of a surprise to me. I like surprises. <laughs> So you were here the other night, we were in the middle of a meeting, and uh, I got an email, and I said, well, got this, end of meeting, gotta go, <laughs> just jumped right out of it, because uh, I had just gotten the email from the uh, Mastering House uh, with a download for this record, R.C. Williams, R.C. and the Grits, oh my goodness. Uh, out of Dallas, as you mentioned, amazing community down there, I met R.C., uh, at the RSVP Records uh, inaugural party. Okay. Uh, it was a who's who of people. Uh, RC, Sean Martin, Spud, Daniel Jones, just on and on and on. Um, mixed in with kids getting up on stage. A uh, 12-year-old drummer named J.D. Beck sat in, prodigy, incredible dude. Um, you know, just a, a great family there in Atlanta of amazing people. And uh, so I met RC at that show, right? And so that's where the conversation began for this record. And I'm looking at his bio. This is so fresh and new. Um, I have not listened to the whole record yet. Okay. Uh, just pieces. This song jumped out at me because it's that unexpected track. My God. Okay. I'm cool. This is great. You know. But I, I didn't really particularly expect this so I love there it there it is um, who's on who's on the joint well let's 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 we're lo- so I, the reason I said that it's brand new is that I, I haven't even gotten the updated bio I'm pulling this straight off of RC's website let's hope uh, I get everything right here uh, we're looking at RC Williams on keys and vocals <clears throat> RC has played with everybody as it says in his bio to name a few, <laughs> Erica Badu, Snoop, Prince, Jill Scott, Queen Latifah, The Roots, Bootsy, Pharrell, Mostep, Common, Talib Kweli, Dead Prez, Dwelly, Raheem Devon, Bilal, Roy Ayers, Roy Hardwick, just to name a few, just a few, okay, these, you know, very serious stuff. Now it says here, and I, I, this is fact check for me, do you see what it says here? Recently completed their first album featuring Snoop. And Erica, I, I that may be the first record, so we're, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to find fact find that one. We're gonna have to fact find that. But uh, I did hear some things in here, uh, like some recognizable voices, when I was flipping through it, and I was like, is that is that is that? So when I get that information, <laughs> well, we can brag even more <laughs> on RC's behalf, right? Uh, the band Claudia Melton. My apologies if, if this is not exact. Uh, Job Born, uh, Braylon Lacey, Cleon Edwards, who we know from the Funky Knuckles, I believe. Yes. That's at least who I met him through. Uh, and Tehran Lockett, who I met through uh, Corey Henry. Um, this record is going to hit on November 4th. And uh, just thought I wanted to just play it tonight so people have an idea that it's coming up and keep an eye out for it. These are great people. You gotta ask it. So, what's that Dallas vibe like? Because I know you were kind of comparing it to what's going on in Atlanta, but not so much. What, gotcha. what's... Well, like Atlanta, I mean, it, you know, it's a community, and I mean, it's a it's a really tight knit 
community of ridiculously talented people. Right. And 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 unlike some other areas, some other cities, I won't name any names. Um, it seems like there's not. Everyone doesn't come predisposed to the idea that they're in competition with each other. Wow. So there's there's a question of bring, bringing people up. People refer to each other as their cousin, their nephew, and you're like, really? Your family's big? And you're like, no, 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 no. That's, that's just how they refer to each other. Um, so a really strong, powerful music community, which I model rope it right? After that, because we're not really doing anything... You know, I'm going to have to, we, we got the shuffle on here, as we mentioned earlier in the episode. But we're just going to go out with it some more from this Atlanta group, uh, Four Corners. Um, yeah, man. Bringing them up. Bringing them up, musicians supporting each other. And, it, and, and the boundaries between music as a career aren't there. The, the, it's music as life. Oh, I love you know? that. I mean, and I think a lot of that comes from the church. But it also comes from the community, and I have uh, some stuff that I just realized, and I don't think I've mentioned it to you before. Um, I think we have about an hour-long interview or phone discussion with uh, a gentleman uh, named Jason Davis and another gentleman that he brought in to talk about the history of Dallas music going all the way back to, I believe, Booker T. Washington's daughter and the Magnet School and the, the way... Music has been a vehicle for community and for family. I gotta hear that. And idea. for you know, and and you know, when you see it come out of Dallas, you're like, well, of course, every guy is better than the next, than the last. You know, it's just and 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 nobody's stressed about it. They're all just supporting each other. So, um, kind of like I'm sure there's some stories, you know, but when you look at it from the outside, you look at it from here, you're like, that that's that's the direction you want to be in. Music, and that's what we're trying to do here at Robo. Like the Philly vibe back uh, in late 90s, the five spot. And yeah, there, only, only almost citywide, or even like not, I mean, because you, know, you know, Dallas is a sprawling place, you know? I mean, it's 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 not just in downtown, it's it's the whole, the whole thing. Uh, and of course, you know, Snarky Puppy tapped into that. That's a, that's a conversation that we can have. Uh, Hopefully we can have, you know, Spud or Sean, you know, when they're up here, come on the show, talk about how uh, University of North Texas blended and tapped into the community, Deep Ellum, and, 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 and Dallas musical community. Wow. Because you got Spud, Sean, Corey, uh, Mark Terry. You know, you got a lot of people from Texas that are part of that band, and that's, of course, the fertile ground where they, where they develop their sound. Uh, next show. I love it. We're good? We're great. Alright, everybody, thanks for thanks for listening to this. Thanks for watching this. And uh, hit the subscribe button so you know what's up. Alright, <laughs> thanks. <laughs>